The ODX specification is designed to give a huge degree of flexibility when describing diagnostic data. This, though, can make ODX quite complex to get to grips with from a human point of view, as it can provide huge numbers of possibilities to describe even a single thing. Remember, too, that the description we put into ODX is always from a tester's perspective. Hi everybody, I'm in Cunningham from Vector GB, and amongst other things, I'm responsible for helping our customers in the UK get the best use out of our products in the areas of software update and diagnostics. Today, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to check ODX data and to get to grips with that complexity and find potential issues that might become visible during the runtime of a diagnostic tool. And we will use ODX Studio to do this. ODX Studio is Vector's tool to author and extend diagnostic tester data based on ODX. It offers many standard views, customer specific perspectives and plugins to simplify the diagnostic engineer's life and just make it better. Within ODX Studio version 9, our most recent release, we introduced a great feature to increase the overall quality of diagnostic tester data captured within ODX. Now, let's just think about a really simple example that will illustrate some of the complexity we have when thinking about data in, in ODX. So, Let's start with the ability of a tester to ask an ECU to not, not send a positive response to a diagnostic request. And it does this by using the positive response message, sorry, suppress positive response message indication bit of a services subfunction as defined in UDS. This is a, a UDS feature that you, you will hopefully know. And of course, when this bit is able to be set on a service, there are two possible ways to send a request. We can either have it sent with positive response suppression or without it. So there's two different things the tester can do and then there's two different ways we'd expect the ECU to handle the request. And for this very simple case, an author can actually follow two completely different and independent directions in ODX. It's important to say that both approaches are 100% standard compliant. However, they would result in a subtly different behavior in a tester at runtime. The, the very first way we can model this positive response suppression in ODX is to use the element pos response suppressible at the level of a Diag service. So for example, the ECU reset service. What this does is it tells a tester that positive response suppression is possible. And the effect at runtime then is that we'll get a single service for the use case to perform a hard reset. And we can choose as an engineer whether we want to have the positive response or not. So really quite user-friendly and, and straightforward. The second approach we can take is very different. So we can instead model two independent Diag services, one for the hard reset as we saw previously, but now without the pos response suppressible and one for the ECU reset with no response where we only model a request, no response. And we also at the level of the reset type set the pos response suppression bit as a constant bit value of one in bit seven. So we see here we have hex eight one, while over here in the other service we've defined for the same use case, hex zero one. The effect of this at runtime is that the, the tester will now show two services that can be selected to achieve an, an ECU hard reset, which could be confusing to the user. And therefore, in Vector's opinion, this is a less desirable way to model ODX data. Additionally, and this is where things can get very, very complicated, it's completely technically possible 
to take both of the approaches that we've just looked at in the same ODX file. So it's possible to have some services modeled with the POS response suppressible and others modeled with duplicating services, which of course will be confusing not just for the user, but also potentially for authors and reviewers of the data during the development phases. So how can we help in this situation with, with ODX Studio? Well, for 13 years now, ODX Studio has provided the ability to check ODX data for conformance with the ISO ODX standard, ISO 22901, for conformance with common best practice kind of rules that we define in ODX Studio itself, and also for OEM specific rules defined via authoring guidelines to fit OEM specific process environments. Since ODX Studio version 9 though, we've also included runtime conformity checks. Now, this means that checks in ODX Studio now come in two parts. And we'll just go into the options and the checker. And I can see there's the vector tools conformity checks. So we have checks for use of ODX with Candela Studio, our diagnostic authoring tool, Canoe Diva, our validation tool, our testers, Canalizer, Canoe, Canapé and Indigo, and our reprogramming tool, VFlash. Uh, they're all enabled at the moment. Additionally, we can then see the, the standardized checks that I, I mentioned that we've, we've had now for many years. Now, these aren't fully enabled, so I'll just do that now. Uh, I'll save that and click OK. And what I'm going to do, I'm in the Diagnostic Data tab, so I'm, I'm looking at the, the diagnostic data of this project, which is a, an ABS project, and I can run checks. I'll do that, and very quickly we'll find there are 814 problems in this ODX file. Eight errors, 806 warnings. Now then, it seems as though, if I scroll, there's a lot of results relating to this ODX Studio check, best practice check, uh, number 7017 for elements with no OID. So actually, let's go into my checker configuration and let's turn that check off. Conveniently, I can filter. So there it is, I'll turn that off. I want to save my file and I'll rerun the checks. Ah, that's much better. Now there are only 10 problems being detected having turned off that rule. So there's 800 and something of those checks were relating to the OIDs not being set. So we, we got rid of hundreds of uh, results by turning off that one check. So uh, let's carry on and see what we have. Well, in the results down here, the rapid access so I can look at a, a report where there's a lot of detail or I can look at the rapid access. And the rapid access is really convenient because I can double click and it will take me to the, the relevant part of the ODX data. Now, I can see as well as the fact that there are errors and warnings and I can turn those on and off as well if I want to, to, to do some filtering in the view. I can see in this next column, there are some things for which there are automatic checks available. The, the green arrow here, there's an auto correct option available. The green arrow with a question mark, as we see in the bottom here, says there's a couple or more possible auto correct options. And at the top, I have these where there is no auto correct option. And we'll start at the top because what we see straight away, we have ECU reset has been defined twice, once with a request and a response and once with only a request. This is exactly what we were just talking about. And we've already said from Vector's perspective, this is not a, a, a desirable way to model data. So let's delete that. And now to fix this and, and get uh, the desired behavior that we want to go to the addressing and I can enable POS response suppressible and in here, I know I need to apply it at the reset type so I can filter, I can select the reset type, I can click OK. Now, 
Because I've manually edited the data here, I just need to quickly rerun the checks. And there we go. I fixed the three check results with, with one action. Now, the next few down here, I've, I've got one we'll come to at the end again because it's more manual checking with expert knowledge required. Here, I can autocorrect. And as I autocorrect, the rule violations we can see are being removed from the check results. So there's no need for me to refresh every time when I'm, if there's an autocorrect available. The next ones here, these are more complicated. Um, there's no auto, no single autocorrect. So I, I need to have some knowledge of, of what correct is. And in my project, I know I need to keep the reference to functional class dids here. And I need to do the same thing here. If I and again, if I double click, it will jump me to the the relevant part of the of the data, so I can say yeah, I understand what this is and I want to keep it. This last one, again, I can double click, and it's going to take me to this global negative response, and I can see here it's a tools conformity check that's hit, and it's saying that the negative response violates UDS. So this is not a, a, a problem in the ODX. What's modeled is, is valid from the UDX perspective, but it's not valid as UDS. So let's go and see what we've got here. Let's go in. So I can look at the properties. If I look at the PDU table, sometimes it's easier to look at the graphical view. Oh, look, there's a, a an empty block byte in the PDU table. Someone's put the NRC code in the negative response to, to start in byte three rather than byte two. So that is easy to fix, actually. So I know I just need to change the byte position for this parameter. So I can select and change and I can click OK. And now I can rerun the checks and I can see there are no problems remaining in my file. And so I can go on to enjoy my day. So as we just saw, the ODX standard gives a great deal of flexibility in how to describe diagnostics. However, of course, this flexibility, as we said at the start, creates huge complexity for human authors and human reviewers of data. ODX Studio, though, as a fully standards compliant authoring environment, guides users through the complexity to arrive at a high quality of result with the minimum amount of effort. A major part of this is the ability of ODX Studio to apply checks to the data, both in line with the ODX standard and also in line with the needs of common engineering tools from vector and also other vector. Uh, other vendors. Now, of course, these aren't all the checks we need. So additional checks to match a specific process environment, which is described by authoring guidelines, are also possible and are in place for OEMs that have adopted the ODX standard with vectors assistance. We saw in this video how ODX Studio is even able to automatically correct some common authoring errors to ensure a high data quality and high quality of life for diagnostic engineers is achieved. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website via the links in the video description. And of course, as always, go to the Vector YouTube channel, hit the bell to get notified when we are going to publish further videos on our various tools and, and topics of interest. Hope to catch you again soon. Bye.